Are we going? Yeah. Okay. So let's draw a big animal. So, so we're going to discuss today the difference between, well, not the difference. Let's start with the animal cell. Okay. And we'll just do a, a run through. I would like you guys to draw it the way I draw it because my storyline will allow you to kind of follow through and, and learn in terms of pictures. We're going to see this all as pictures, and it'll, you'll make it immensely easy after that. So I'm going to draw a cell, okay? And this is an animal cell. If it were a plant cell, I'd probably draw it rectangular, okay? Not that all of them are rectangular, but they're, they kind of have a square. And I mean, plant cells tend to have a squarish appearance because plants have cell walls. Do animal cells have cell walls? They don't. So they lack cell walls. But what holds everything in? What do you call that that's around the cell that holds everything from leaking out? Plasma membrane, okay, so good. So let's label this thing as a membrane. Now, what is it that you know that is the control center of the cell? That's what's called the control center of the cell. That be the nucleus. So let's draw a large, please draw a large enough nucleus because we have to show some things in there. And if you draw a tiny little thing, you're gonna be frustrated. Okay. Now the nucleus has how many membranes? One or two? two? It has a double membrane. Good. Sometimes you call it a double. Sometimes it's called double envelope or double membrane. Now if I just draw it like this, I draw two, you know, it's like wrapped in two membranes. There's something wrong with that because the DNA that we know is located in the nucleus, so in here is, you want to write it right up at the top, inside of the nucleus. So let's label what this is. This thing is the nucleus. And then these lines represent double, I'm putting the arrows if you're wondering. Okay, and this is a double membrane. And something has to allow the DNA to come out. Well, it's not going to be the DNA, but the, the messenger RNA transcript has to get out of the nucleus. How does it get out of the nucleus? Through nuclear pores. See, are you surprised that you remember as much as you remember? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is awesome. Okay, so, so there you go. And so there's some nuclear pores. Now, if I had a sphere up here, a ball, and I said, this is the nucleus, from your vantage point, recognize that the whole ball would be covered with these circles. Those would be pores, okay? But I'm doing it in the plane of the board, so I'm saying, oh, well, the pores are here. But recognize they're all over that sphere, like that beach ball, okay? Now, we'll come back to the nucleus. Let's, let's talk about the major organelles. <clears throat> and what is all of this, okay? So inside the cell, where this is the membrane here of the cell, holding everything in, okay? We have these organelles. Now the word organelle means little organs. So here's some, I'm gonna list some little organelles for you, okay? Organelles, let's come back plural. All right, the first thing I want you to do, and if you have colored pencils, does anybody have colored pencils with them? Or do you have, because I've got some in that drawer back there by the uh, microscopes. Would you grab those, Kendall? It's on the right-hand side, I believe, closest to the window. I put a package of color pencils. What I'm going to suggest is every organelle that I draw, you do in a different color. Okay? Yeah. So if you could just throw three colors down on each table, we'll be good. What we're going to draw is are the following. We're going to first draw the rough ER. Does everybody know what ER stands for? Endoplasmic. Particular. Yes. Endoplasmic. Don't you love that word? Endoplasmic reticulum. Which means that it's highly folded. Reticulum. 
Okay. But we call it the ER, so that'd be called the RER. And we're going to talk about why it's called rough, because that's always a test question. And then we're going to draw with a different color the smooth ER. I'll use red for this, if this works, I will use red. S-E-R, good. And that stands for smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And then we have the next one after that, we have to choose a third color, is let's do the gold G right here. And then we just put arrows to everything. See, G-O-L-G-I. -G now sometimes you see this as gold G apparatus, okay? So I'm gonna write gold G complex or apparatus. Now we're going to draw them with the respective colors. Give Kendall a second because she was not passing pencils around. So I'm going to sketch these as they are coming off of the nucleus. So the first thing I'd like you to do is to take your black, whatever color you designated as your rough ER, and look what I'm doing. I'm doing highly folded membranes, but leave yourself some room because we have to do the same thing with smooth and we have to draw highly reticulated or convoluted membrane for the gold, okay? So there's the rough ER. Next, I chose red. You get your color, whatever that is. We're not done with that. We're going to come back and stud it, but now I want you to take your this and just kind of go like that. That's your smooth. So I'm going to draw an arrow to my smooth. I'm going to use the appropriate color and draw an arrow to my rough. And I'm going to come in with my blue, in my case, and I'm going to do the Golgi, which is, again, highly folded. These are called endomembranes, so they're highly folded. Okay. At the end of each of these membranes, I would like you to draw a bubble because these, like, if you ever chew bubble gum and you go like this and you make a bubble, I'm sure you've all done that. What's happening here is that these endomembranes, I want you to think what the repercussions of this are. The endomembranes are blowing out their membrane. They're like bubbling off some of their membrane inside of that bubble called a vesicle. We'll write that on the board in just a second. That vesicle is a vehicle that motors whatever the cargo is, might be protein, and it's moving the protein to the second destination or moving it to the third destination, okay? So the cargo has to be encased, if you will, in this bubbling off of a membrane. What's gonna happen eventually to these three endomembranes as they are, if I took a piece of gum and I blew a bubble and then I pinch it off, and I put that bubble down, and I do it again. What's going to happen eventually to my piece of gum? I've run out. I've run out. Okay. So there's always a test question that says, "Hey, where in the cell are more membranes produced?" What do you think the answer is? Huh? In the endoplasmic or the tube? Yes, the in the ER. And, so, and that makes it fun and easy to remember because where you're going to go to when you need more membrane, you're going to go to the emergency room. You're going to go to the ER, okay? So that's how you can remember that. So now, to make your rough endomembrane, your rough ER, your rough endoplasmic reticulum, I just keep throwing endomembrane because it's highly folded and it's considered an endomembrane. But to make it rough, we have to stud it, just like in the north, we use studded tires on snow, right? Eh? So look at you're going to put these little circles on here. And does anybody know what those represent? What may, I'm going to ask the question like you're going to see it. What makes the rough ER rough? The presence of ribosome. Ribosomes, yeah, ribosomes. Okay, so look at I'm going to make this rough and studded like a tire in snow rough endoplasmic reticulum, those dots are now that re 
brings me to my next question. Are ribosomes, there's, there's about two or three things I want to throw out here right now because you're ready for it. So, so try to switch gears for me just for a second, okay? Ribosomes are not considered organisms. They're just considered structures. Now this is going to surprise you. Bacterial cells that lack Bacterial cells don't have all these organelles that I've drawn. But guess what? Bacterial cells do have what? Ribosomes. Okay? And the way you're going to see ribosomes show up, like in models and in cartoons, is they're always dots. They kind of look like, in your drawings, they're going to look like dots. Now, why am I putting all these out here? Because in addition to ribosomes, which are located on the what? The rough ER, they're also free in the cytoplasm, okay? So I want you to speckle this a little bit with some of these and then go ahead and label those guys too. But I'm gonna use, there's, there's a new word for it, so I gotta be careful. Those are called free ribosomes. There, yeah, so I'm going to do that a little bit differently, just so, just in case somebody might be confused out there. These guys are free out there. Okay, how's that? Okay, that's just, I just redrew the, the plasma membrane. So we got three ribosomes, we've got ribosomes. Now you've got to tell me, what is the function of ribosomes? It's blank synthesis. Do you know, Cameron? Photosynthesis. No, because no. we don't photosynthesize. <laughs> yeah, we're not autotrophs. We're, we can't photosynthesize. Good guess, but... DNA or RNA? No? <clears throat> yeah, you said you started to form the first one. What is it? I did. I started to form the first one. <laughs> yeah. What kind of synthesis? Ribosomes. Begins with P. Oh. Oh, oh begins with O. <laughs> Think of your four major biological molecules, which one began with P? Protein. Protein synthesis. Okay. So what's the job of the ribosome? Protein synthesis. Okay. So I'm just going to put that parentheses to reinforce that in your head. Protein synthesis. How's that? Talking about ribosomes. That's their job. Protein synthesis. Okay. So that makes it. Once you know that, man, the story starts to get interesting. Okay. Now I told you, make sure you draw some vesicles. So look at. I'm going to make a big old vesicle popping off of there. They don't always come off the end. I've seen. I've seen where they're bubbling off the sides too. But I'm just. Uh, I don't want to clutter my picture too much. So I'm going to put a right a vesicle there. And I'm going. I hope I said vesicle, not right. But, and I'm putting a vesicle there. So let me label like this one. And I'm going to say that's a vesicle. <coughs> okay. Now, is it, it's, I can't put too much more over there because it's starting to get too cluttered for you. Okay? Now, I want to tell you what the functions are, and I'd like you to write these down. What would you guess is the function of the rough endoplasmic reticulum? Production of ribosomes. Did you mean that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't think you. I think because they have ribosomes, right? So what's what do you think their job is? Uh, I think you don't see a ribosome. I mean, I think you guys don't get what these really look like. So you know, like you go to a circus or something, and you know those big long balloons and the clown or somebody is always taking on, they make a saber for the kids, right, with these long skinny balloons, and they twist them and they make you a crown or a helmet or something like that. Uh, that's the way I want you to visualize this, okay? This is a big, long balloon. Now take that big, long balloon, if it were flexible enough, and start to highly fold it. Do you see that it's hollow inside? Okay, so, so the part of the story that I didn't get to yet, which is why you're not making all the connections, 
is that DNA is up in the nucleus. It gets copied into messenger RNA. And in future chapters, I describe all those little details. This messenger RNA, draw it like a ribbon. Okay, it's look, that's called the transcript. Okay, and how is it, tell me again, how is that transcript going to get out of the nucleus? Through the nuclear pores. So let's make it escape through a nuclear pore. Here we go. And it's out there now in the, in the cytoplasm, and it's like, okay, got to find a ribosome. Okay, because I want to make messenger RNA. Oh, yes, I'll go back to your genetic information flow diagram. So this is the genetic material in our cell. And then what am I writing next? Messenger RNA. And the messenger RNA is going to be translated into that P word. Protein. Protein. Okay. This is called your, you must never forget this. Okay. This is super important because if you can remember this little model here, this schematic, everything I say makes sense. It is transformational, okay? So what's in our cell that's the genetic material? What's the molecule? You say DNA. Where is the DNA located, everybody? Right, right under this arrow. Where is it located? In the nucleus. Okay? Now, fine. So we can't, we're, we're one fourth of the way. I've got to write four things up here, okay? So the where of the DNA is in the nucleus, and the what is it called? Is it called transcription or translation, Joni? I always got this confused. Uh, transcription. Yes, it is. Okay. So transcription means like to copy. So transcribe. Transcription is the process. Write that down and then I'll say it. It'll make a little more sense. Okay. So here's what we're saying. The DNA is up in the nucleus. It is going to be copied or transcribed. So DNA is made of what? A, T, C's, and G's, right everybody? But what's RNA made out of? A, U, C's, and G's. So when I say it gets transcribed, what I'm saying is there's no T's here. So you'll never see a long ribbon of, here you're gonna see a long ribbon of A's, T's, C's, and G's in some order, okay? Some random order. This transcript here of messenger RNA is gonna be made of what bases? A, on that ribbon, you're going to see A's, U's, C's, and G's, okay? So see the huge difference? This gets copied into this. This then goes on out here. This transcript leaves the nucleus, and out here is being turned into what? Proteins. And so where, the where of that, I know you want to say ribosomes, but they mean in the big picture. So you've got to get, for this one, you always have to remember to say cytoplasm. And I'll explain what really cytoplasm is defined as. Cytoplasm, and what is that process called? If it's not transcription, it's translation. See, these A's, U's, C's, and G's are being turned three of those at a time, three bases at a time, which are called codons, secret code. Codons are going to pick up an amino acid, right? We looked at that one day. Like UUU is phenylalanine. So I'll say it again. All these are broken down into this long line of whatever that messenger RNA is made of <coughs> will be red. Like maybe it's Okay, so three bases at a time is interpreted. Remember, some people got Nobel Prizes for this, figuring that out. So you've got your methionine, and then you've got, I don't, I, we'd have to look that one up, but this is phenylalanine. So here are your, um, and here are your amino acids get strung together. What does that make? It makes a protein, okay? So that's the simplistic version. So answer me again, <coughs> since I've already told you what it is now, if you say it, you'll remember it. What is this process called where messenger RNA becomes protein? Translation. Translation. Awesome. I need you to either take a picture 
or to write this down because you, I have had little like quizzes and stuff. <coughs> these will be blanks, and you'll fill those in. Okay. So DNA is the genetic material that's copied into messenger RNA. It's trans, so that's called transcribed. It's translated into protein. Back to our picture here. Where? Because, because I told you that I would tell you what is cytoplasm. So here's the definition of cytoplasm. If you please write that down. Cytoplasm, does everybody know how to spell that? Let's see, I put it right here. Cytoplasm is actually, it's everything except the nucleus Okay, so that means that technically <coughs> um, it includes the organelles. Okay, so it's the swimming pool juice in there, and, and yeah, there's another name for that too. But cytoplasm is all this, it's the free ribosomes, it's the organelle, but it does not include your nucleus. Okay, and if you can remember that, again, you're going to be able to do deductive reasoning that will figure everything out. But, so I want to end on this. I want to tell you what are the functions of these three things and remind you that there's a couple of other, and well, there's something else very important out here, okay? So since you know what ribosomes do, if you had to reason without me telling you, what do you think the rough ER does then? It makes, Kendall? She's my protein girl. Kendall? Protein. It makes protein, okay? So she's just gonna, and sometimes that happens. I get so many in the class and they always have that. It, for some reason, they always remember this particular thing. <laughs> you know, and so we just always call on that person. But, okay, so let's let's look at this because it really, really should be clear at this point. <laughs> Proteins are made on ribosomes. Ribosomes can exist either free in the cytoplasm or they stud, S-T-U-D, they stud the rough E-R. There's always a test question, what makes the rough E-R rough? They're not asking for rocket science here. What's the answer? Ribosomes, okay? Now, so we know that the rough E-R makes protein, okay? So I think you should do something like FXN for function. I wanna talk about what's the function of each of those. So I would say next to this, I'd say, Okay, proteins are made here. Lovely. How am I going to write that? Ran out of room. Protein there. What is made in the smoothie yard? Now this gets kind of fun and, and crazy, but what gets made in the smoothie yard? If it's not proteins, it's... What's another? I'm trying to think how I can, how I can lure you into the answer. Okay. Uh, Okay, so what's cholesterol, estrogen, uh, testosterone, lamb, oh, lamb, what's, what's the biological molecule that they belong to? Biological, which four of the major biological molecules does cholesterol belong to? Yes, yes, you answered the question. So what does the smoothie R do? Lipids, it works with lipids. Now it does some other really cool things too, okay? Calcium comes into play. Uh, now, what did I tell you that both these guys are gonna do? They're going to make more membrane. Did everybody remember that? They, okay, so the membranes are gonna make more membrane. There was a test question one time. Sadly enough, people missed it. Um, and the question said, if the nucleus had a little need had a little membrane accident, okay, and in a cell, and the nuclear the nucleus needed some membrane repair. Who's going to repair the nuclear membrane? One of the answers was nucleus, and then one of them, of course, was I think it said the endoplasmic reticulum, and then maybe it said Golgi or something like this. What would have been the proper answer for the nuclear repair? It would have been, yes, because we just got done saying these two things are responsible for making more membrane. 
They've got to. They've got to because they're they're punching out. They're 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 blowing off their membrane. Eventually, they're going to run out of membrane. They're going to be like, oh, we're up the creek without a paddle. Okay. So um, smoothie are lipids. Uh, lipid synthesis and remember about your, I'm going to just add here membrane repair or membrane synthesis, membrane synthesis. Okay, that should do us on that. And then my favorite organelle is the Golgi apparatus. I'm very fond of it because it does all of these things. It tags, it sorts what's coming in. It modifies, and then it's like a UPS shipping center, and ships. Now, if you watch little videos, I thought this was very interesting. One day I gave this, this little lecture here, and then I found a video clip. I've never seen it, of course. I just pulled it up. And guys going through is saying almost exactly what I just said. And uh, what, what I just told the class, that's what the funny part of it, is I said, this vesicle that gets pinched off the Golgi is going to generally goes to the membrane right here. It motors out to the membranes. Now, okay, so <clears throat> anyway, and, and it, it just said it almost word for word, so we just, or I, I just thought that was kind of funny and amusing. It was like I wrote that little script for, for his video and, and I hadn't even seen it before. Okay, so <clears throat> let's do a little run through. So you, and then we'll finish. What well, happened? I've got one more organelle to put on there. Okay, so you've got a transcript up in the nucleus. DNA has been copied into messenger RNA. Uh, I'm going to kind of like go through and bring you into my storyline. How's that messenger RNA going to get out of the nucleus? Go through the nuclear part. Awesome. Okay. Um, so so then that transcript is gonna start to enter the what possibly? What what organelle have I drawn there? That transcript, messenger mm -hmm. RNA transcript is gonna enter into which organelle first? Oh, the rough. Rough ER. Good. Okay. So so the transcript's running through, there's ribosomes. We know proteins are made on the ribosomes. And then the whatever is produced is going to be bubbled off of the membrane into something called the <laughs> it's all right up there. Something oh, called vesicle. something called the vesicle. What is the job of the vesicle? It just like ships it out. Good. So it's like a vehicle, right? So it's going to move. So you're not just going to have some free floating like out in space, you're not gonna have some free floating thing. It's gonna get packaged into the vesicle, which is made of membrane, and then it's going to motor it to its next destination. Now, what if I have a protein that needs to have, I'm back to you, John, I got a protein and it needs to have a lipid made. Where might that vesicle, now I didn't tell you this part, so that vesicle is going to come up to the what <coughs> organelle next? Yes, you're right. So now imagine that here's the membrane in front of my face, and on my head is the vesicle. The vesicle's going to, it's like a sci-fi movie, it melts, it morphs, it goes into and becomes one with the membrane. So now the the protein is going into the membrane and now lipids will be made but now hang on okay hang on so what did i say this guy does this golgi apparatus well this so so whatever happens here the cargo is going to be pinched into a vesicle here it's then going to motor on to the golgi Okay, Golgi is really important. It's like the last stop. You've got to go there. Okay, don't have to. If you're protein, you don't have to go to the SER. Okay, but you got to go to the Golgi. All right. So, so it's gonna, you know, maybe take the scenic route or something. But it's gonna go to the Golgi. Okay. Now we're down to the Golgi. Okay, and the Golgi has got a magic wand. Okay, pretend, pretend. Okay, and it sees this protein coming in with some lipids, and it says, oh. You are supposed to be a lipoprotein. That means a protein with a lipid. 
So step right over here. That's where it does the chemical tagging. See that word tagging? It does the sorting because it's got to sort out chemically. It's got to sort out the different things, okay? So it tags it, it sorts it, uses the magic wand, and modifies it. What that word means is it complexes. On an exam, it might say, which of these, I'm sorry, which of these organelles complex the proteins? Okay, and they, and they mean like maybe it gets a sugar antenna, if it's a recognition protein or something like that. Okay, which, where's that gonna happen? That's gonna happen in the Golgi. Or if it says, where, who does all the shipping to the membranes? Where's that happen? Golgi. That's why I love the Golgi. So, to finish my story, it tags that compound coming in. It says, look, I'm gonna put all of you guys that are the same over here. It then goes through, does its magic, and modifies, ding, now you're a lipoprotein. Ding, you're a glycoprotein with a sugar on you, okay? Whatever it's supposed <coughs> to be, it makes it happen. Then it says, okay, I'm gonna put you in little vesicles, and you guys are gonna go where you're needed. So maybe one of those proteins is going to come out here and be a little recognition protein with a little antenna. Looks like a bee cap, right? That's what he does. Okay, the cartoons look like. Okay, so let's talk about what a recognition protein would do. A recognition protein's job, you need to know this, this is always a test question. A recognition protein, do you know how to spell that? It's spelled um, R E C O G. Recognition protein. Is this little cartoon I drew right here. And this is an antenna. That's a sugar antenna, and that's a protein, okay? And that antenna is super important, because look what it does. It, it picks up foreign objects as they go past, right? So it's like, hey, wait a minute, that must have been a bacteria, because I don't recognize the chemical signature from it and then it alerts the immune systems, like, hey. So, recognition <laughs> proteins, here's the definition. Recognize foreign, F-O-R-E-I-G-N. Recognize foreign cells from self. Recognition proteins recognize foreign cells from self. It's part of your blank system, immune system. Good. Okay, so we know what these things do. We know the importance of pinching off into vesicles, that the cargo is, is embedded in the vesicle and then gets mortared on. So these, the, this Golgi has to bring the materials because remember what our membranes are made of. They're made of lipids and they're made of proteins and chunks of cholesterol. So, so it's got a very important job to do because it really is like a shipping center, okay? And some of those, pro I want to say this, some of those proteins is, uh, are integral proteins. Now that means that they're integrated. You guys know what that means? Kind of, kind of a matrix with, okay? If you want to visualize this, visualize a paper clip. Pull the paper clip apart a little bit, and then imagine that the ends of the paper clip are the, uh, the receiving ends of that. And you can embed that in many ways. You can say, oh, that paper clip is spanning the blue, mem spanning the mem membrane, rising on the outside of the membrane. That protein might be on the inside of the membrane, okay? So you have all these configurations of proteins. Fortunately for us, we don't have to figure this out. Our body just takes care of all this stuff. Thank the Lord. Okay, so now we've got something called mitochondria. We want to put that. And mitochondria are, I'm going to over overemphasize, and uh, mitochondria have a convoluted interior membrane. So they're double membrane too. So that organelle, put a big arrow there, that thing's called the MIT. Mito one is called mitochondrion, many are mitochondria, or more than one, mitochondrium, not chondrion, 
There we go. That's one. Now tell me, what is the function of mitochondria? Yes, everybody knows that. We all remember that from grade school, don't we? Powerhouse of the cell. What in the world does that mean? Powerhouse of cell. What does that mean? It produces what molecule? ATP. It produces ATP. So I'm going to put ATP. Not 100% is produced in there. I mean, you know, we'll be talking about that when we talk about cells. <coughs> Now there's one more other organelle. You got to tell me whether it goes in there. <coughs> Am I going to put chloroplast in that animal cell? No. Why? Because what's the job of the chloroplast? <coughs> That's in plants. That's for photosynthesis. Yeah. Okay. We're good. Okay. So that's the animal cell. Uh, maybe next time I'll just quickly go over the plant cell, show you some of the major features of that.